Picture this, you're a single gay black man with no kids, a single family home in your name, disposable income to spend, you love EVs and you hate Tesla. Well, you lease a Polestar 2 for three years. But what happens if you quickly learn that the service department isn't up to snuff? The service mechanics are almost like five-year-olds who are trying to perform LASIK surgery. You're left battered, alone, and confused. What do you do now? Well, you spend 76 grand on a three-row SUV, the Kia EV9. Let's talk about her. It literally took me like 35 minutes to film that fucking intro. <laughs> I didn't know what I was gonna say. It's really fucking hard. I really envy people who can like think of or write up a script and then follow the script by memory. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, uh, an automotive channel where they do it really good. Um, the Throttle House guys are really good at it. And obviously they've been doing it for a long time, but there's just something about me being in public and being nervous about speaking on camera that always fucks with me. So, but I can talk to you like this and it's really fine. And the sun's out today, love that for us. So I'm gonna film this in four sections. The first section is gonna be just the buying process, the overall ordering purchase process, me at the dealership, etc. The second part, I'm just gonna jump right into shit that I don't love about it. And honestly, I feel like I tend to end my videos with that and I would rather I want to end on a high note. So I'm you know I'm still gonna still gonna drag this thing for filth, but I don't want to start with that. The third thing are comparisons to my Polestar 2. Now this no won't necessarily be like things that are bad or good. It's kind of just like a mix. It's gonna be a mix of all the things there. And in the last category, I'm gonna end with things I absolutely just like about it, genuinely love about it. And honestly, there really is a lot to love. So let's get into it. So Kia had a reservation process for these vehicles and it really was just putting $500 down and waiting. So I did that. I selected a particular dealer here in Atlanta, but after a few months of texting my service advisor, he either wouldn't respond to me or he would reply and say, oh, my manager needs to talk to you. And then his manager would never call me and I would text him, call him back. Oh, did my manager reach out to you? No, not yet, whatever. So I was like, fuck that shit. I found the only other Kia dealership here in Atlanta and I called them one day while I was on my lunch break at work and they were like, yeah, we literally have one in stock. So <laughs> I got off work, drove over there, test drove this right here. And then after the test drive, I was like, let's buy the motherfucker. Give me your fucking money. <laughs> one issue that I'm still dealing with is when you put down the reservation, the $500, you're supposed to get perks, a thousand kilowatt hours of free charger from Electrify America, the digital light patterns on the front, it comes with one special pattern, but there's five more that you can buy for $250. They gave us those for free or they're supposed to. You get a level two charger for free and also like extra high-end maintenance on the thing, even though Kia already gives three years of free maintenance anyways. My problem is that, and the new dealership didn't tell me this, when I switched from the old dealer to the new one, all of those perks disappeared because it was supposed to be tied to the VIN of whatever the specs of the car that I chose, whereas this one was kind of just like sitting on the lot. They didn't tell me that. And so I, while I got the free Electrify America, they didn't have me in the system for the free level two charger. I don't think I'm gonna get the digital light signatures or anything like that. I opened a case with Kia. They've been helping me. They actually got me the level two charger. So I need to go pick that up tomorrow. Tomorrow's President's Day. And so I'm gonna go pick up that level two charger tomorrow. But um, it's kind of annoying that I didn't get the extra light signatures. It's 250 bucks. And again, this was Kia's mistake, so I might still open up. I mean, I already have a case open. I might consider continuing to talk about that with them, but it's just, it's just more so annoying. As far as the purchase process, I won't dive too deep into this because I already made a video about like scammy salespeople, but I think that if I hadn't done all the research I did, they definitely would have fucked me over. Like they were trying to upcharge the car 7,500 bucks. So the EV credit like evened out but I was sitting at the finance desk and I was like, you are going to charge me MSRP minus the $7,500 lease credit. And if you're trying to charge me any more than that, I'll leave. Like, I don't need this car. I will leave right now. So I ended up paying MSRP minus 7,500 bucks. I'm not gonna tell you what my monthly payment is because you know what? There's a lot of xenophobia and racism when it comes to Kia and other 
brands, I don't know where you all are doing this and like you're in the wrong, like you're watching the wrong channel if you're xenophobic or racist, obviously. But I see so many comments that it's like, you're spending 76,000 on IKEA, that is Korean garbage. Like, have you ever been in a Ford two years after it's been produced? The, the but like the lettering is coming off the buttons, it smells like, please get the fuck out of here with that shit. You're in the wrong place. If, <laughs> if you're trying to come at me with xenophobia, like you shouldn't be here. Oh, which is a quick reminder. I never tell you all to subscribe, but you're like, please subscribe. I need your subscriptions. I really need them. Please subscribe. Please, thank you. Give me your fucking money! <laughs> so I walked away with a three year lease deal on this motherfucker. Look at it, look at it. Again, it's not the spec that I wanted at all. Uh, the exterior color is lighter. I believe this is ivory silver. I wanted like a darker one. The interior is actually like the blue and the gray uh, shade. I wanted like the white and the black, but it looks good. It looks really good. We'll, we'll cover all that in a little bit, but um, yeah, this is my, this is my three-year baby. Got it until 2026. Shit. Oh, there's a little ant crawling by the camera. Gross, go away. Okay. The first thing that I don't really like, it's gimmicky. I thought I would use it more. It's really cool looking if you're just doing a little party trick, is the Remote Smart Park Assist 2 system. Okay, I think it's on. Let's see if this works. So like I'm holding the button, it's not doing anything. I'm gonna let go. Let's try this again. The car is on, I can hear it, but for some reason it just doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna go and I don't know why. Now, some people have told me that it has to be on a flat surface. I mean, this surface is pretty fucking flat. Like I'm not really, like I'm not on a hill. Like I'm just in a parking lot, you know? Oh, joystick. Okay, now it just turned itself off. So it's inconsistent. And the one time I did get it to work in a parking garage, a really tight spaced parking garage, there were maybe, let me flip this camera around. There were maybe, like one foot on each side. I mean, it was a tight space, but there was plenty of room for it to get in and it didn't, like it kept, it just, it didn't want to go in. Um, it was the perfect scenario for it to work and it just didn't work. I just don't, I don't get why it just now didn't work. So gimmicky, don't really care. I might try it one more time right now just because for fun. Oh, again. again, it's blinking. I can hear it. Yeah, it just doesn't want to go. It's so annoying. I can see on the screen, press and hold, forward or backward on the smart key. Oh, see now it wants to go. I had to look at it. Okay, so again, I don't really know when, why, how it decides to work, but now it's deciding to work. So that's great, love that. Now let's try to get it to go back. I don't know why it didn't want to work before. So again, inconsistent, inconsistent. But it's still very gimmicky, still love it. Well, someone just pulled in this lot. I don't know if they're gonna kick me out, but for now, I'm gonna continue on because I can. The other thing I don't really love about this, the haptic buttons, let's, let's look at this. Um, I think it's a cool idea. I think they're kind of finicky, so Pressure-wise, it just feels inconsistent. Like the setup button, I feel like, it's like they kind of just decide when they want to work consistently. Like the, the push just doesn't feel consistent. It's cool. I, I use the buttons regularly, so I love having the setup button here so I can go to the setup, but again, it's like not, con it's like you've got to figure out where to push. The setup one is the most inconsistent. I don't know, it could have been cute. There's just, there's just something in there that's annoying. Other items I don't really like is just ergonomics in general. So somebody else brought this up, but if you're looking at this, the HVAC screen is hidden behind the steering wheel. So if I want to see it, I have to literally, this is like my vantage point. I have to move over and touch all the things. And to be honest with you, I end up 
I mean, something I love about it, it's great that it has physical buttons. I can just do everything that I need to do here, temperature, etc. Heated seats are actually on the door, so that actually makes life way easier. But I just think ergonomically, it's really, it's really weird. Also, we need to talk about the start button. So uh, EVs should not have a start button. I should be able to just sit down, put the car in drive, and go. Uh, but if you're gonna have a start button, put it in a place that is easily accessible. Like, what, what am I supposed, what? It's so awkward to like lift, to put my hand under the steering wheel to push this. Just stupid. Ergonomically fucking stupid. Also something ergonomically stupid is uh, the drive mode button. I don't know why I want it to focus. Bear with me y'all, this is the Osmo Pocket 3. It's a new camera. Um, I don't know, it's like threshold for getting too close. Um, okay, I think that's good. So. I'm never gonna use the four wheel drive lock ever in my life. So that's just there. The drive mode button, it's in such a weird position. And if, you're, if you've are if you been following this channel for a long time, you know that I usually do fingernail, long fingernail tests. I just cut my nails to just let them breathe. Uh, I also have Raynaud's syndrome. I don't know if you know what that is, but like my hands are always freezing and so are my feet. And like it causes blood vessels to like burst because it's so cold or it's like they're so cold, but then it warms up really quickly. So my blood vessels like heat up too fast and burst or whatever. So with long nails, I'm trying to, when my nails are long, it doesn't allow like blood to really flow because I'm not using the tips of my fingers. So I'm trying to let them just like breathe a little bit. But anyway, the drive mode button is in a stupid position. I just hate it here. Like there's no, especially when my nails were long, if you look, I basically had to push it like this or with my thumb like this when my nails were long because it like, picture my nails are usually like four times as long um it's just not in a sexy position like it should be here it should be or even if it was like a button on the center console here or like a dial that would be really sweet but yeah it's there for some reason another ergonomic thing honestly is the screen location so this is me sitting as far back as i can go and I shouldn't even say as far as back as I go. This is me sitting in a comfortable position right now from the driver's seat. And if I reach, and I have long arms, I'm six foot tall, right? Like I still can't reach it. I always have to lean forward. And especially when I'm doing Apple CarPlay, wireless, love that, the music, the now playing button is all the way in the corner. So I'm literally like, oh my God, it hurts. Stretching really far just to get and reach that button, which is kind of frustrating. Again. Ergonomically, I would love, I actually love the, the Genesis brand and Hyundai in general for having like a rotary knob here. I would love, like I love a touch screen. I love being able to do that, don't get me wrong. I think it was Mazda's for a really long time where they only have the rotary knob and you couldn't touch the screen. But for me, I love a little knob right here to supplement the touch screen. The next thing I don't really like is sadly the ride quality. So when I took this car on a test drive, maybe it's just the high of buying a new car. It felt really cushy and plush. Now this doesn't have air suspension and I knew that going into it, but I've also never had a car with air suspension and I was coming from a Polestar 2 with like 21 inch rims with slim as fuck tires. Like every, every little jostle on the road I would feel in the car, in the cabin. But with this, I know it's heavy, it's 5,800 pounds, but because the sidewalls of the tires are thicker, I just expected a little bit of a softer suspension. After owning it for two months now, it feels like I expected more from the ride quality. Granted, the roads in Atlanta are fucking terrible. I've just submitted like four requests to the city to fill potholes. If you Google, no, if you go to Reddit and search EV9, Kia EV9 float, there's a number of people who have the GT line, which is what this is, who say that when they go over bumps or they're turning the steering wheel over bumps, the car, the back end feels like it's swaying. I definitely feel that and it actually feels kind of unsafe. There's a number of people with their dogs chilling. So I'm gonna wait for them to go. White people can be so nosy, like go away. So I drove over a patch of unpaved pavement on the highway and the car jostled so much. Like I felt like I was losing control. And as I'm driving around the city also, I feel like it's consistently happening a bit more. 
and maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Maybe it was like, again, the high of buying a new car. I feel like I didn't feel that sort of sway, floaty feeling like when I was first test driving it. Even in the first month of ownership, I feel like I didn't notice it. One interesting theory from Reddit or the Kia EV forums, I don't remember where I saw it, was that it's all dependent on the drive mode. So I keep the car in eco mode, I can show you. Eco mode keeps the car in rear drive bias. It'll only use the front wheels in like extreme circumstances. Whereas in normal mode, again, let me push this stupid ass button. Normal mode is all wheel drive all the time. And what I've noticed is when the front wheels have power coming to them, it's almost like they're gripping the road better and handling the bumps more. Whereas when it's rear drive bias, the front wheels are kind of just like dead and maybe just don't absorb impact as well as they could. Again, that's just a theory. I feel like I've tried it and I can't tell if it's sort of like a placebo effect, but it seems like it works for me. Um, I need to do more testing, but if anyone else has a GT line EV9 and you experience that sort of bumpy, floaty feel, let me know. And I know some of you are going to say, well, you're driving a fucking three row, 5,800 pound SUV. Like you're going to feel it a little bit. I just, I don't know. For a $75,000 car, I think I just expected it to be softer. Again, I know it doesn't have air suspension, but I just, I think I expected a little bit better. The last quirky, weird thing I don't necessarily like about this car is that it has one pedal drive, but the one pedal drive turns off when you put the car in reverse. So you always have to turn it back on. So as you can see, it says level three down there. So I'm gonna hit the paddle, love how easy it is. It switches to I pedal. So if I put the car in drive, I know I don't have my seatbelt on, sorry. So I'm driving, la -de la -de la -de la it's safe, I'm in a parking lot. So I'm still here, but if I put the car in reverse, watch what happens. It switches back to level three. So I'm rolling right now and I'm not on the, on the brake. It just goes. So then I'll put the car back into drive and it's still at level three. Every time I reverse, I have to remember, not remember, because it's kind of just muscle memory, but every time I go from reverse to drive, I have to hit this to put it back into I pedal, which is just kind of like, it's weird. It's weird, because on the Pulsar 2, flip on the Pulsar 2, the, it was, I always had it in one pedal drive, and like, it doesn't matter if I was in reverse or drive, it just like stayed in one pedal drive. I hope that's something that this car can do. Maybe they're doing it because the car is so fucking big and heavy that they're like, well, when you're in reverse, we don't want you to like plow. I, like, no, actually, no, that justification doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, oh my God, there's somebody swinging a Biden Harris flag behind me. Let me get this. I don't know if you can see. I'm not gonna talk about politics right now, but like there's a genocide happening and Biden supports it and so does Kamala. So like, mm, fuck Nancy, fuck these people, bye, okay. So the things that I don't like are now leading me to talk about the problems with this car. And there really is only like one problem that as I mentioned in the beginning, I feel like is worthy of a class action. Let's talk about it. So if you go to, if, if you search Kia EV9 12 volt anywhere, you will find dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people who are experiencing their 12 volt battery dying. And I'm grateful that I haven't been a victim of that yet. When the 12 volt is charging, you know because there's a little light on the dash that turns a yellowy orange anytime it's charging. This all started because the light for most people was just on all the time. Like the light would come on, it'd be on for an hour or more, and it kept happening multiple times per day. And the forums were like, oh, well, that's normal. Like, it's good that you have an indication that it's charging, but it's like, why, why, is, the, why is the big battery charging the 12 volt like perpetually forever until the end of time? So the theory now, there were, there's been a few theories. So some people thought it was the, the fingerprint reader. Some people thought it was the wireless charger that was draining power. Some people identified that it was the charger lock so when you plug the cable into the side of the car to charge there's a, a feature that you can change in the settings that like locks the cable in your car or you can just have it not be unlocked so you can just kind of remove it remove the cable freely some people identified that that was causing the 12 volt to drain but for me i learned and this is i mean maybe it's there are different uh different items affecting this 12 volt but for me it was the digital key which i was really excited for the digital key feature in this car. So here's here's the deal. With the ultra wideband 2 technology using digital key, 
if your car is within, or if you're always within like 20 feet of your car, which for most of us, like we don't live in a fucking mansion. So like I pull in my driveway, if I'm sitting in my living room or my kitchen, I'm like still within proximity of the car. The theory, so the car is basically perpetually awake because your phone is close to it. And it's like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna be close enough to unlock soon. So I just say all this to say that there are 12 volt battery problems with this car. And I don't think, and it's hard to say if they're just like shoddy batteries or if it's a mix of like this software bullshit. I don't know if it's on Apple's end, like is Apple trying to ping the car? Is it Kia not knowing how to like shut down the sort of functionality? There were people recently on the Reddit thread who were like, yep, it's definitely the Bluetooth. You can buy like Bluetooth sheathing on Amazon. So he's gonna like layer his entire garage with like Bluetooth blocking fabric so that way he can keep digital key but it's like not constantly looking like his car in his garage is not constantly looking for the phone and killing the battery for me personally again i'm not affected thankfully ever since i turned off digital key it's been fine so when i had digital key turned on this was draining one to two percent per day like it would be at 70 percent. i would chill all week and not drive anywhere and granted it was cold outside like in the the teens or the 20s um but I would come outside at the end of the week and it would have gone from 70% to like 50 something in a week and I didn't drive it. That is not normal. As soon as I turned off digital key, I am not getting any battery drain whatsoever, like, like phantom battery drain. So it's again, a bummer because I really love the idea of just leaving my phone at home, or excuse me, I love the idea of just leaving my key at home. I just want my phone. And granted, when I had digital key, that shit worked every single time. It would acknowledge me upon approach. The door handles would come out. It works really, really well. If they come out with a software update that addresses it, cool. But for now, I'm just gonna carry the key fob with me. Okay, I feel like that's enough of the 12 volt shit. Mmm, smell like shit to me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get like in the back because I I never sit in the back and it's roomy. And I want to talk about the next topic, which is just comparisons to the Polestar 2. Let's go. So we're in the second row right now, and I just wanted to show you, uh, so the the driver's seat is set up for me. I'm six foot. Knee room, fabulous. Headroom, fabulous. Uh, let's get into the third row now, actually. You know what, I'm actually gonna move, I'm gonna move the second row up just a little bit, um, like, so it's comfortable. This just looks and feels so good back here. Anyway, let me try to get into the third row so I can show you if I can fit. Let's go. Oh, fuck. Oh fuck, oh shit, oh my god, oh shit. Oh, okay, we're in the back seat, and listen, oh, the floor mat that's installed in this car like isn't the right, it like doesn't fit right. I guess we'll just leave that like that. So fucking weird, bro. Okay, so we're in the back seat, the very back, and bitch, I have room. Like, like, the seat, back it's a little it's like very reclined i think i could actually i don't know if i could move it up from here <gasps> okay wait there is a little strap right here oh i can so now i'm like hella perked up i'm trying to show this the right way it's really tough um now my seat is very upright compared to the one next to me um which is fine but it, it feels like it gives me less being back here gives me much less leg room, but like if I pull this little strap that's right here that I didn't know existed and I can lean my, my seat back a little bit, I'm good loves. I have hella head room. My knees are good. If I need to like extend out, oh, I'm gonna get this gimbal someday. Like if I need to stretch my leg out, I can, but I honestly don't even really need it. Like I'm good. I'm solid back here. Fab. Like adults can sit comfortably in the third row. I'm six foot even. It's lit back here, y'all. You can have an orgy in here if you wanted to. Mm-hmm, I know that's right. All right, well, I'm chilling in the second row. Let's talk about the things that compared to the Pulsar 2 are just, just interesting to note. The first thing I wanted to mention in my last video about the Pulsar 2, digital key was hit or miss. The digital key in this, uh, it works so well. So it's really annoying that it drains the battery because it was flawless. Every time I approached the car, it recognized me. Though it's also important to know, I think a lot of people thought that when you walk away from the car, the car doesn't automatically lock. You have to manually lock it every single time, which is fine. I wish it had auto lock. The only time it auto locks is if like, if I'm going to the mailbox and I walk by my car with the key, it'll unlock. But then as soon as I walk away, it's like, oh, that nigga's not trying to get in the car. It'll automatically lock itself. So 
I'm hoping that maybe there's a software update in the future that will auto lock when you walk away from the car. But for now, it just doesn't, it doesn't do that. But honestly, again, I don't really care. So if they fix the battery drain for the digital key, I'm gonna turn that shit on right away because it works impeccably well. The next comparison to the Pulsar 2 is charging speeds. Again, I think the, the highest I ever got from my Polestar 2 was 147. This one, I'm consistently getting uh, 207, 208 at Electrify America. It'll charge from like 10 to 80. Uh, for me, I wanna say it was like 20, I wanna say it was like 27 minutes for me, which was pretty sweet. And just having, I know there are cars out there that charge faster than 208. I think Tesla's charge at 250. Don't know how realistic or accurate that is in the real world, but like anything over 200, I think is, perfectly tolerable because i just be sitting there doing my duolingo and shit and 200 is great for me i already said this in the things i don't like but i just want to reiterate having a start button is fucking stupid i hate the location i hate that it exists in the pulsar 2 i would just sit my ass in the seat the sensors in the seat would be like there's this nigga let's go and i would just put the car and drive and we would go now i have to push the stupid button and like wait for it to start up and i just think it's so Having a start button on your car is antiquated. It's time to move on, babes, it's 2024. The next thing, ooh, hello. The next thing is the sound system in here. So this is a Meridian premium sound system. It's got like, it doesn't have Dolby Atmos, but it has surround and it sounds fine. It's really crisp. I think what it's lacking for me is bass response. Like if there were woofers under the seats or maybe like an extra woofer in the front, I think it would sound a lot better the bass, the bass is lacking. Again, very crystal clear, bass is lacking. It also doesn't get as loud as I like, and maybe that's good for my my hearing, you know, because it's not good to drive around with loud music as much as I as I love to do it. As you, I don't know if you saw earlier, like my sunroof is open, the windows were down, I was bumping shit because it's like 50 degrees today. But yeah, the sound system in the Pulsar 2 with the Harman Kardon speakers, for me, I just think it was better. I just think it was a better system. And the people hated on that system. It wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best. But, like, I just think from a bass perspective, I just, like, felt it in my taint way more in the Polestar 2 than I feel in this car. Sorry. Another difference I want to highlight between the two cars, and this is a good one, uh, the fucking cup holders, dude. Let me turn this camera around. So, as you can see, I have a fat-as-fuck 36-ounce Yeti metal bottle and i also have this um oh i forget it i just got this one on amazon but it's like i don't know how many ounces it is maybe it's like 20 26 28 ounces anyway it fits them perfectly in these cup holders so the one the back one is bigger like when you push the little button and you make them go floop floop like this one fits this perfectly and then that one is for like smaller mugs oh my god it's a lifesaver like usable practical cup holders that don't in any way whatsoever interfere with like my arm space because I have a big armrest right here. Like the usable space is a Mac. You know what, let me get up front and show you this actually. Also the doors are open wide as fuck. They're not 90 degrees, but like, I feel like a king, oh my God. Here's my arm, ergonomically speaking. Um, and this is where I would normally put it. So yeah, like if I'm my arms here, like maybe, you know, but I'm not, it's, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother anything. It's fine. Like my arm just, my arm just chills right here. And so let me actually take these out and show you. So this is the, is it five below? I forget what it's called. Love this mug. Iron flask. So let me take out this water bottle and put it next to me. Um, again, you can use these, you can just use this as storage if you want to, um, and there's that. So as you can see, mine's fucked up and it was fucked up from when I bought it and they're supposed to be ordering this shit for me because it was a it was a scratch and then he was trying to like rub it with an al like alcohol spray and now it's like discolored and just like ugh, it's so fucking annoying. So yeah, they're supposed to have one ordered for me, but anyway, I don't know if they do. So I just keep it open so it's not ugly. Um but you just push the little buttons jiggle that in it's perfect love this the other difference requires me to get out of the car so let's do that now let me turn the camera around so you can see so if i have groceries or other things that i'm carrying the Polestar 2 had the kick release so i would just kick my foot under the bumper and it would open it would also close it too when i kicked it under the bumper so this sadly doesn't have that and i'm i it's actually a feature that i is high on my list i don't know how i overlooked it maybe this is why so this is what this does so the key is in my pocket right now
what happens is the car recognizes that I'm behind it. So I don't know why that was being weird. So the car recognizes that I'm behind it and it automatically opens. The problem is once I'm back here and I like get all my stuff. So let's say I've got this like big fucking thing. If I'm getting heavy things out of my car and I walk away, like, how am I supposed to close the trunk? If I can't kick my foot under the bumper, like so, kicking my foot, kicking my foot, nothing happens. So in order to close it, I either have to use the key fob and find it, or I need to reach up here and push the button. which is not ideal in the slightest. So now I'm, I've got this big heavy box. I'm dipping down to touch the, the button that's under the trunk lid to open it manually again. But um, yeah, that is something I overlooked and I really love that in the Polestar 2 and it's lacking here. So I hope that they can get like an auto detect walk away from the trunk or if they do add a kick sensor, I think it's well worth the cost for them. Ooh, I had to close the windows in the sunroof. It's getting chilly. The sun's going down. Okay, if you watch my Polestar video, you know how I felt about those fucking sun visors that were small, that didn't extend. Bitch, let me show you these sun visors. Are you ready? Um, I don't even think I can like, I don't even think I can show you the scope. They're so big. It's like 18, at least 18, maybe 20 inches. The mirror is fucking huge. Hey, sexy boy. Oh my God, you're so sexy, man. Okay, so you've got this. Sun visor's huge. Look at this. And so, you listen, you've got the suede or like the microfiber fake suede headliner. It's so plush. It's so premium. It feels so fucking good. And so you lift this. It's easy to take out. It's so fucking easy to take out and put back in. The Polestar, I needed a fucking jackhammer to do it. And then look, watch. Let me switch this camera around. It's so big. It's so, I don't want to face track me. Oh my God, stop face tracking me. It's so big. Look, it's already so big. Look, <gasps> oh my, it extends, bitch. The sun, you wish, son, you wish that you could fucking blind me from the side, but you fucking can't because the sun visor is so big. I know it's in front of me now. So you're like, well, you're being blinded. I know. But if the sun is over here, bitch, this sun visor does everything that it needs to do. Period. Perionka. Polestar 2, you could fucking never. Um, okay, the sun is blinding me now, so I'm just gonna move the car a little bit, and then we're gonna wrap this up with all the things I loved. Okay, that's much better. What do I love about this car? Honestly, a lot. There's a lot to love. There's so much to love. Let me turn this camera around. So, uh, again, I know I talked about the urban ergonomics kind of being annoying, but I think the interface is so much better. Honestly, when I think about my Kia, I had a, 27, a 2017 Kia Optima hybrid, and I think like the fonts were very like edgy for a car, but they've really upgraded the responsiveness. Um, everything is snappy. I can go to the settings. It's there. Again, it's not like iPhone, smartphone snappy, but I think for what it is, um, I'm not going to go home. I don't want you to see where I live. Um, I feel like everything else is actually stop. Oh my God. Every time you open this up, it plays shit. And I'm not trying to get a copyright warning cause I'm trying to monetize. Um, yeah, everything is just really snappy. Um, I'm not going to read my messages. There might be porn in there. Um, yeah, everything is just really responsive and I'm super happy with that. I love the little screen right here, even though it's kind of annoying to access having just a dedicated place for this stuff, even though I'm like craning my neck to see it is good. I love that there are physical buttons. I literally never even have to use that little screen because if I want to turn on the, the function, I'll just hit this up and it shows you on the screen what it is. So if I want to switch it to front, side, back, pussy, ass, face, I can do all of that and I can also turn it off from here too and get a nice little notification. I love that the Kia logo lights up, which you probably can't see that right now because we're directly in sunlight, but I love that that lights up. The buttons and switches are so easy to access. Again, with the exception of this stupid drive mode button down here, uh, when my nails especially are really long, again, they're usually like four times this length. 
I can access the, the window switches really easily, all of the buttons. I love that the dedicated heated steering wheel, ventilated seats, the massage seats. Um, I use the massage seats, massage seats. I use the massage seats pretty regularly, but they're not, they're not very powerful. So I'm gonna push the button. And when you push the button, it shows you like ergo motion. You can do pelvic, lumbar, whole body. Um, it's not super strong. And like, again, I'm not expecting, see, there's that fucking light. Do you see it? Ooh, we're charging the 12 volt because you're training the 12 volt battery. Bitch, you need to get it together with this fucking light. It's so stupid. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's massaging my butthole right now. And, you know, it's fine. It's like air. I think it's air cushion based. So it's kind of just like inflating air and deflating air over and over again. It's okay. Like it turns on automatically after 30 minutes. There's like an anti-fatigue option. So when I'm driving long distances after 30 minutes, it'll just turn on to like help my lumbar, which is actually really great and impressive. Material quality in here is fine. Everything that I'm touching, let me actually turn this around. Everything that I'm touching is squishy, you know, like this is squishy. Um, this is like, you know, it's scratchy down there, but who cares? Like I love, this is actually like the Polestar 2 actually had very similar material where like it fe it looks like, it looks like speaker grill. It's like, pl it's plastic back there, but it's like knit. I love that. I think the interior color is really sexy with the little blue gray. Um, I love a black headliner too. I think a lot of car, I don't know why a lot of cars do gr like light gray or tan. That shit gets dirty so fast. And so many companies will charge like $80,000 million to upgrade to a black headliner. It's like, give everyone a black fucking headliner. Like, what is wrong with you? Maybe they think it looks bigger or brighter if it's a light color. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, oh, another thing that I really fucking love. Sorry, this is just like a long rant, but honestly, it's great. So you push the parking button down here. And these cameras, oh my God. So it's gonna be hard to see. I wonder if I can, um, oh, I need parking lines to show you. So there's so many views. There's like the top down view. That's the front view camera. Sorry, oh, there we go. Um, so let me do that again. There's the top down view camera. There's the front view. This is my favorite. So it shows you the right wheel and the left wheel. So when I'm pulling in or out of a parking garage or a parking space, I can see exactly how much room I have on the right or left side. It is immaculate and it always has like the top down view. Um, you can do like a wide angle view. I never use the 3D. I mean, I use it sometimes. Like this is kind of gimmicky, but it, like the quality is actually pretty good. Uh, even the rear view camera, I feel like is way better quality, way better quality than the Polestar 2, but um, it is low to the ground. So it does get schmutz on there from time to time that I have to like wipe off. But again, um, oh my God, I didn't even know I had it from the back view too. So I can like see both tires and if I'm gonna hit anything on the side. <gasps> uh, it's just wide view. I don't know what that one does. This is a top down view. It's just, it really is just immaculate. Um, I love the wireless charger, it actually fucking works. So I've been charging it this whole time. Yeah, my phone battery is on 79%. But you put it in here, it doesn't rattle around. It starts charging right away. The light comes on saying, oop, you're charging. And it doesn't just heat my phone up like the Polestar 2 one did. It like actually works really well. I feel like I just ended up all of these being compared to the Polestar 2, so apologies. Yeah, wireless charger is functional. It charges my phone. It doesn't just turn it into a hot brick. So in most of the other Kia EV9 reviews on the internet, I think, I don't actually know the difference. So there's, so there's a second row optional relaxation seat package that basically makes the second row seats electric and their comfort and you could lounge them and have a footrest and all that. It was an extra like thousand bucks. I don't need that shit. I don't, it was just an extra expense. So uh, because I don't have that, I don't know if that is what constitutes uh, the third row seats being electrically lowered. Cause in a lot of the, the uh, European and Asian market vehicles, uh, there's second row electric fold down seats and third row. So for this, it only has second row. So I'm gonna push this button. 
and it kind of just like, they just kind of like shoot forward really fast. And then for the third row, they come with these. I actually prefer these. It's so much easier to just pull a lever and just do it. Oh, let me do that again. Oh, I need to be more graceful. There we go. So the space in here is fucking incredible. I went to a thrift store here. I'm not gonna tell you what it is cause I'm gonna gatekeep it. But I went to like a vintage thrift store and I fit a, it was like five foot by, like five foot three inches by like three foot three inches uh, art piece. And it was, I mean, I had, I had room to spare from like longitude wise which was amazing, but latitude width wise, it was like a perfect snug fit. So three feet wide, six feet long. If I wanted to take a nap in here, I mean, I wonder if I could do it. Ooh. Like maybe I would need to put like a little divider there. Um, but like, yeah, let me turn this around. Um, yeah, bitch, if I wanted to sleep in here, Mm, I totally could. I have room to spare. And then my feet. Yeah, dude, this is, there's, it's roomy as shit back here. It's tight as fuck. But then the only thing is if you want to pull up the seat, so the second row or the third row, you pull that little lever. You got to like, you need two hands. That's the annoying part. So you have to like catch it. And then you just Velcro this. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. It's going to be hard to see. Who's calling me? Oh, someone's calling me. My... Gabe, Gabe Zaddy is calling me. Sorry, dude, I'll call you later. So you pull the lever and then you got the seat and then you have to raise up the headrest manually too. So this is the third row. Let's go to the second row and lift those seats back up. Um, the handle's not open, I don't know why. I'm gonna... Uh, so to lift this seat up, there's a little button right there. So if I try to lift up the seat right now, it doesn't go anywhere. I have to push that button to like release it. Boom. Little, it's like a little air release and we're good. And that's it. Not too crazy. And I always forget you have manual sunshades back here too. Fabulous. And the back seats also have heated and ventilated seats. The second row, not the third row. But still, good enough. This is my two month verdict. I think I bought the car like December 13th or some shit like that. So it literally has been two months with the car. And I don't think that any of the, the negatives can take away from how much I love it. Admittedly, I have OCD anxiety of some sorts and so when the ride quality started to change, I'm just like, did I, like, is it broken? Is it the suspension? Is it a little bit? I think it's just me overthinking things and I'm trying to chill out. I'm actually back in therapy again after like three years being away of like obsessive thoughts and obsessive thoughts and like anxiety and stuff. But the thing is, it's a new car. It's under warranty. If something's wrong with it, I'll just go get it fixed and move on. I think I just take a lot of pride in things and I need to get away from that it's not it's not even necessarily a, like it partly is part of it is a pride thing but it's also just like this is an expensive car this is 76 grand so when you spend that much money on something whether it's a house a car a handbag whatever you expect it to like work and function in the way that you would expect something that expensive to function um with all that said every time I get in this car I have fun it feels good I'm actually taking a road trip to Indiana in mid-March to see my nibbling perform in a play in their high school. So that's gonna be a whole kooten kabattle key. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Aside from car content, you're gonna get a lot of other vloggy stuff from me. So I've got some, as you know, I just bought a house. So I've got some home improvement stuff that I filmed. I've got some other vlog, personal things that like, if you're here for the cars, you're still gonna love the content. If you're here because of me, you're definitely gonna love the content car or otherwise. So stick around and thank you all so much. And also subscribe if you're not subscribed, okay? I need it. 
I want to monetize, okay? I'm just going to be real with you. It's tough out here. I've been on YouTube for three years, but I don't make a lot of content because, again, anxiety, full-time job, the world is crumbling. I don't always have the inspo. But every time I end up filming, I feel good. And I like bringing you this content. And I like, I like sharing the love with you. And if you want to continue to feel love, you should subscribe because I have a lot of love to offer everyone who's watching. So thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.